In Module 2, we introduced the concept of the inverse of a matrix. Let's see how we can derive the inverse using Gaussian elimination. In Lecture 12, we'll consider another method of obtaining the inverse. Why are we interested in the inverse of matrices? Recall in Module 1, we solved a system of linear equations. Using Gaussian elimination, we found a solution in this form. Recall we started with an augmented matrix of the form A, B, and we transformed that into another augmented matrix I, C, where the identity matrix was on the left and the solution to the equation on the right. How did we get the identity matrix on the left-hand side? The elementary row operations we performed to get the solution can be represented by the matrix D. So if we pre-multiply AX by D, as we do here, and the right-hand side, we have that D times A was the identity matrix, and D times B was the solution, C. That matrix D is in fact the inverse of A. We designate that by A to the minus 1. If we have the inverse of the matrix of coefficients, we can pre-multiply the right-hand side constants by that inverse, and so find the solution. Before we see how we can calculate the inverse, let's look at some of its properties. The inverse of a matrix is analogous to the inverse or reciprocal of a scalar. We have a scalar A. The inverse or the reciprocal is just 1 on A. If we multiply A by 1 on A, we get the scalar 1. The inverse of a matrix, then, is A to the minus 1. So if we multiply a matrix by its inverse, we get the identity matrix. And as we saw in the last slide, if we have the inverse to a matrix of coefficients, we can find the solution to that set of simultaneous equations. Here we have a couple of matrices, A and C. We're going to multiply A by C and then C by A. Remember, we multiply the rows in the first matrix by the columns in the second matrix. So in the one, one position, we'll have the first row by the first column. It'll be 7 times 1, 7, plus 3 by minus 2, minus 6. In the 1, 2 position, we'll have the first row by the second column. That will be a minus 3, and plus 3. In the second row, first column, we'll have 2 by 7, 14, plus 7 by minus 2, minus 14. And in the 2, 2 position, 2 by minus 3, so minus 6, plus 7 by 1, plus 7. And so that's equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. We have an identity matrix. So we have A times C is equal to the identity matrix. We can easily show that C times A is also equal to the identity matrix. So matrix C is the inverse of matrix A. And we've demonstrated the commutative property. A times its inverse is equal to the inverse of A times A. Other properties of matrices? Only square matrices have an inverse. That's a necessary but not sufficient condition. Not all square matrices have an inverse. If a matrix does have an inverse, then it's unique. There's only one of them. A is then said to be non-singular. The other necessary condition for an inverse to exist is that all the rows and columns are linearly independent. If all the columns and rows are linearly independent, then we can't use elementary row operations to convert one row or column into a series of zeros. Let's check whether A is the inverse of B and vice versa. To see whether A is the inverse of B or vice versa, we multiply them together. If we get an identity matrix as a result, then one's the inverse of the other. Remember, rows of the first by columns of the second, that's equal to 20 times 0.2, so it'll be 4, plus 5 times minus 0.6, so it'll be minus 3. In the 1, 2 position, we'll have first row by second column, so it'll be minus 10, plus 10. In the 2, 1 position, we'll have the second row by the first column, 6 by 0.2, 3, plus 2 times minus 0.6, minus 3. And in the 2, 2 position, the second row by the second column, 6 by minus 0.5, will be minus 3, 
plus 2 by 2 plus 4. And so we have 1, 0, 0, 1. We have an identity matrix. B is equal to the inverse of A. A is equal to the inverse of B. Now that we know a little bit more about inverses, let's see how we can find one. Recall that I stated at the beginning of this module that the inverse captures the elementary row operations that we applied in deriving the solution to a set of equations. We can use that to find an inverse. Once more we use an augmented matrix with the matrix of coefficients on the left hand side, but this time we have an identity matrix on the right hand side rather than the vector of constants. So this time our augmented matrix is in this form. Our augmented matrix then is an n by 2n matrix. In other words, it has n rows and 2n columns. Remember we use a vertical line as a separator between the two halves. We can find the inverse of any non-singular matrix. It doesn't have to be the matrix of coefficients for a system of equations. We perform elementary row operations as we did before until we have an identity matrix on the left-hand side of the augmented matrix. The right-hand side, then, is the inverse of the matrix we started with. So we start with an augmented matrix, AI, and we end up with an augmented matrix, IA inverse. Recall the elementary row operations that we can use in Gaussian elimination. We can interchange any pair of rows. We can multiply any row by a scalar. And we can add any multiple of one row to a different row. Here's a small example before we return to the system of three equations. We want to find the inverse of matrix A, 1, 3, 2, 7. We form the augmented matrix with the matrix of interest on the left-hand side and the identity matrix on the right-hand side. We already have a 1 in the 1, 1 position. So next we want to eliminate the 2 in the 2, 1 position, new row 2 is equal to row 2 minus 2 times row 1. Row 2 is the same. We subtract 3 times row 2 from row 1. The 1 in the top left hand corner is the same. We're just subtracting 0. Subtract uh, 3 times 1 from 3 will give us 0. Once again, we also do the same to the right hand side. So we subtract 3 times minus 2 from 1. That gives us plus 7. And then we subtract 3 times 1 from 0 gives us minus 3. That implies A inverse is equal to 7 minus 3 minus 2, 1. So that's the procedure with a very simple example. Now let's tackle the example we had earlier in examples 1 and 2. Recall we had this system of equations. We form the augmented matrix with the matrix of coefficients on the left-hand side and the identity matrix on the right-hand side. To get the inverse of our matrix of coefficients, We'll go through the same steps as we did in example 2. We want a 1 up there in the top left hand corner, so we swap rows 1 and 2. We have a 0 in the 2, 1 position, so next we could either get a 1 in the 2, 2 position or a 0 in the 3, 1 position. We'll convert that to a 1 by dividing row 2 by 2. Remember, we also carry out these operations on the right-hand side of the augmented matrix. So next, we want to get a 0 in the 1, 3 position. We add 3 times row 1 to row 3. Next, we tackle the 3, 2 position. We want to keep this 0 in the 3, 1 position. So we'll subtract 5 times row 2. Our next step is to get a 1 in the 3, 3 position. 
we multiply row 3 by 2 on 27. Now we have an upper triangular matrix. We have 1s in the principal diagonal and zeros below. So now we start working up the matrix. We next look at the 2, 3 position. We'll add 1 half of row 3 to row 2. And finally back to row 1. So first convert that into a 0 and then the 1, 3 position to a 0. Subtract 1 times row 2 from row 1 and then 3 times row 3 from row 1. Now we have our augmented matrix in the form of I A inverse. We can use that inverse now to solve for our system of equations by pre-multiplying the vector of constants. Our inverse is a 3 by 3 matrix. The vector of constants is a 3 by 1. So the product will be a 3 by 1 matrix. We multiply the rows in the inverse by the column vector and we get our solution. Recall that's the same solution that we got in examples 1 and 2.